The administration of U.S. President Joe Biden is set to announce a new $125 million military aid package for Ukraine. The official announcement could come August 23, ahead of Ukraine's Independence Day, according to the Associated Press. According to U.S. officials, the latest aid package includes air defense missiles, ammunition for high-mobility artillery rocket systems, ammunition for Javelin and other anti-tank missiles, systems and equipment for counter-drone operations, electronic warfare assets, 155mm and 105mm artillery ammunition, vehicles and other equipment. It is noted that the weapons are being provided under presidential authority for arms reduction, meaning they are drawn from Pentagon stockpiles and may be delivered more swiftly. Recall, the US gave Ukraine permission to use American-supplied weapons, including HIMARS rockets, to strike targets in Russia located near the border with Kharkiv Oblast, and over the past months, Ukraine's armed forces have used US-supplied weapons to strike targets inside Russia. Washington still prohibits Ukraine from using ATACMS and other long-range US-supplied weapons for strikes deeper inside Russia, according to US officials. The new military package will come from Presidential Drawdown Authority, a mechanism that allows the president to deliver weaponry to allies from current U.S. stockpiles. In April, the U.S. passed a long-awaited $61 billion aid package, with much of it covering military aid. As a result of the Ukrainian breakthrough in the Kursk region, numerous information bubbles of Vladimir Putin, which the Kremlin had been building for decades, burst. Foreign policy journalists write, the first bubble, journalists say, is the Kremlin's decade-long propaganda about the catastrophic threat from Ukraine. The publication notes that despite such theses, there was no public response against the backdrop of the offensive. No spontaneous formation of militias, no long lines of volunteers at recruiting stations. Russian military personnel are now being offered absurdly huge bonuses for a contract which exceed the average annual salary of a Russian. Otherwise, there would be no volunteers at all. No passionate speeches about united Russians to defend their homeland. The Kremlin has not even ordered a general mobilization to repel the invasion. Meanwhile, the main representative of the Russian government, Dmitry Peskov, did not even bother to interrupt his vacation, the journalists note. However, the publication writes that society has united not against the Nazis from Kiev, but against its own government. The residents of Kursk Oblast and mothers of conscripts are the most vocal in their opposition, calling on the government to return their conscript sons from the combat zone. The second bubble is Putin's image as an authoritarian leader built on strength, order and the promise to make Russia great again. His apparent inability to protect the country's borders makes Putin, who has linked his rule to restoring Russia's lost empire, look weak, the journalists note. The third bubble that Ukraine burst when it transferred the war to the territory of the Russian Federation is the Kremlin's narrative about the escalation of the war. Allegedly, the existence of Russia depends on the outcome of the war. However, the Russian Federation did not turn to its own defense alliance for help, which it should have done if its existence was under threat. In 2016, Putin sadly declared that Russia's borders do not end anywhere. Today, it turns out that they do not begin at any specific point either. So far, every one of Putin's threats, including the nuclear one, has proven empty. Even Russia's actual border does not seem to be a red line. So another bubble that Kursk burst is the Western theory of escalation and red lines, which make Russia look much stronger and more determined than it actually is. The journalists conclude. Kirillo Duchko, Staff Sergeant of the Public Relations Service of the 13th Operational Brigade, Charter of the National Guard of Ukraine, noted that the enemy does not take its military, both killed and wounded, from the battlefield. He told about this on Espresso TV. The enemy does not take away its killed personnel. They are lying in the middle of an open field. I'll tell you more. The Russians do not even evacuate their wounded. Accordingly, the wounded are either dying themselves or the Ukrainian defense forces are helping them. For example, we recently helped one of the wounded Russians near our positions. 
We dropped a note and water from a drone, then took him out, after which he surrendered, said the staff sergeant. Kirillo Duchko noted that the Russian soldier who surrenders will live and will be exchanged for a Ukrainian military in the future. Spokesman of the Kharkiv Operational Tactical Group, Colonel Vatily Sarantsev, said that Russia does not take away the corpses of its soldiers left on the battlefield in the Kharkiv region. According to him, the Russian troops almost never evacuate the dead, leaving the bodies to fend for themselves. The enemy almost does not carry out evacuation measures for the dead. If he still tries to somehow evacuate the wounded, then irreversible losses remain on the battlefield. Now the heat has returned to the Kharkiv region and this, of course, creates a problem for the enemy, said Sarantsev. The enemy continues active assault operations on all areas of the front. This is already known to everyone in the Vovchansky direction and its adjacent settlements, as well as in the Hlybok Lipsy direction, where the enemy is trying to penetrate into the depth of our defense by all means, Sarantsev said. Despite this, the armed forces successfully restrained the offensive of the occupiers, preventing the loss of positions, he added.